let's move on from that. And I set the boys a task this week. I said, let's do, let's do, because we're in January now, celebrate the, uh, celebrate the month. We'll do uh, each of the top six, a player they should sign this window. So, Wilsh, you can go first. With, um, right, I was given the task of um, Liverpool and Tottenham. Obviously, my team, and then Tottenham, who's my uh, my cousin's team, just had to just had to drop that one in into. Him. But um, <laughs> I, I, had, I, yeah, I had, I'm going to go a different route. I'm going to start off with st uh, st uh, start off with Spurs. I'm going to take a different route. I think I think the obvious choice is to bring in a centre back, but I think he's going to reinvest there anyway. And rather than just to say the obvious of Mencano at centre back, I'm going to go with Tottenham need to sign. Another forward this window, Ooh. something that you won't really? expect, something you won't expect that. at all. Uh, I can get that because Kane and Son. Well, Kane's injury prone. We know that. Mm. Kane loves Kane that loves an thinking. injury. He, he loves the injury bed. I think he's probably having an affair with the personal yeah. injuries department. You know? <laughs> like that's the kind of level we're at. <laughs> now carry on. So you've got forward for Spurs. For Spurs, I was thinking right because human Son and Kane. Brilliant. They're best, best front two in the league at the moment. But you need support around it. If they get, if one of them gets in it injured, Spurs are finished. Because that team has been carried at the moment by two of the best players in the league. But fair enough. I think, and because Lucas Moura isn't being favoured at the moment, neither is Deli Ali. They're both sat on the bench. So I think you get some backup. You sign Malcolm for Barcelona. Young forward. Ooh. Rapid. Ah. Reminds me. Remi I'm gonna. I'm gonna go on. I'm gonna go on, and of course, I'm gonna bring up my own team. Reminds me of a young Mo Salah, just when he wasn't firing. Just, just when he wasn't firing, Mo Salah. Yeah. Mo Salah was nothing. Had a tough Roma, time. Let's be honest. Had a tough was... time at Chelsea and Roma, wasn't he? Was just that little quick forward that couldn't shoot and couldn't pass. You bring him to a Premier League club. You nurture him how to shoot. He becomes a world class player. Yeah. Sterling's still at a Premier League club though, and he doesn't have to show. Mm. Yeah, true, he's dropped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So go on. Well, have you got any at Liverpool then? Go on. Well, the thing is, Liverpool, it was sort of obvious it was sort of obvious where to go, and I think we've now reinvested with Botman. I think Offerman Carney was the shout. It was there's so many things on Twitter about oh Klopp's Klopp's tapping tapping him up. We're gonna get him, we're gonna get him, we're gonna sign him for an amazing deal, forty million for him. Not gonna happen, mate. Not going to happen. So I think I think Botman is the correct re uh, reinforcement to make at this time because he's young. He's still got time to grow. He's at the level. He's shown that he can play at the level, keeping a clean sheet against PSG and doing the second in the league, Lillard at the moment in the French league. So he's shown that he's a good player. And I think if Klopp can nurture him with his defensive growth, just like he did with Van Dijk, just like he's done with Joe Gomez, he, he could be, he could be proved to be a great signing for Liverpool. And I think. It just gives that that extra support that we need, especially with Van Dijk and Gomez out. It's exactly what we needed at this time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, that's uh, Liverpool and Spurs covered. Who did you have, Tom? Go on, um, I was Go on, I was given the task of uh, Arsenal and uh, Man City. Um, Man City oh, being Jack's favourite clubs. clubs. Um, yeah, and both of them... Teams on the ropes. Not on the ropes, I'd say, because City has two games in hand, as I mentioned to you before, but Arsenal definitely. Um, and when I looked at Arsenal, I thought they need they need a midfielder because uh, I just I think they've been solid-ish at the back at some times. Like I think they were one of the lowest in set pieces conceded. Um, keeper's pretty good. Signed Gabriel, a decent yeah. centre back, and they've had a, a decent decent form in that three four three at the back. Um, so I thought a midfielder yeah. that could you know give something for that attack because uh, you got Pierre mm. Emerick Aubameyang who last year was. Fantastic. This year's been nothing. It's been awful. So yeah, it's I've gone with Marcel Tabitza from RB Leipzig. Um, oh yes. He's a he's a twenty. Great shout, that's that. a, that's a, that's a great shout. Shout. And also he'll be really good in the championship as well. So <laughs> that's really good for Arsenal. Um, so uh, he's a, a twenty-six year old sorry. creative oh, uh, midfielder, and I think it's exactly what you want because when Thomas Partey's back fit, them two in the middle, I think that's gonna you know, help them get back to where they need to be in terms of, you know, spreading the ball wide into, you know, that overlapping wingers and fullbacks. Um, 
so yeah, that's what I went with for Arsenal. I really do think it. Was, I, th- I think that partnership with Thomas Partey would be immense. Yeah, I think when Partey, f- I think when Partey first joined, there was so much promise with him, and he had a great game. And he's just started to, he's just started to drop off along with all the other Arsenal players. But I still think he's been one of their best players this season. Yeah, so I think if you can bring it back. Bring it, bring in that little terrier in the midfield. I think that yeah. it's a force to be reckoned with. Ask DT, he'll say exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then for Man City, I've gone with a uh, Lautaro Martinez from Inter Milan. Um, that's, a, that's a really good shout. It, it's it's really no good. secret Pep needs a striker. Uh, Aguero's been regressing for the past year and a bit. Injury <laughs> prone. Oh, he has, he has. He's not been, yeah, he's not been the enough. Aguero that we know. He's not. No, um, no. Yeah. If you, it, the um, thing is, it's, it's easy to be carried away by uh, Aguero's past performances. He's not been as good lately. He's really dropped off, like Marcus. Yeah, said. Anyway, a lot of that is to do to injuries. To be fair, but it's not going to get any better. Like I think he is like thirty-four years old. So I think a twenty-three-year-old <laughs> proven striker that's played in Europe, played in Champions League, performed at that level. Um, is a good deal and Pep's already been linked to him and also he's been a bit overshadowed by uh, Lukaku at the moment so that could have a mm. impact meaning that he might want to go and have a new challenge so I, th- I do think he'd make a big impact at City if he was to move there and could potentially get a lot of goals I think yeah. the way that you've brought in a young striker there is very impressive because if, if, Clark, if um, Pep sorry, managed to bring in a young striker Especially with Aguero not actually playing, and he drop, he just gets injured. So I think if he can learn under Aguero, a Premier League vet, I think that's yeah. that's where we're really learning and really benefit from that. And we, and we, know, he'll, we know he'll get chances yeah, um, because yeah. he's got he's got one of the best passing players that we've ever seen. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, no, Generational say, talent. Uh, let's be honest. I would agree. Guy, I, would, I would agree. The guy crosses yeah. the ball like no one else. I can't not agree. Um, he, the guy from that right side is just insane. He's Beckham-esque from that right hand side when he drops yeah. to the right and he whips the ball in. It's, 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 <laughs> it's incredible. Class. It really is incredible. That's brilliant. So then, uh, if uh, YouTube done that, I was left with United and Chelsea. To mm. I think I think it's easy. I think we could say that they're two huge forces in English football that have dropped off recently. Uh, I think, well, United are coming back. They had a drop-off sooner, but I don't think Chelsea ever really, ever really... I think they had that season under Conte that was... I think it was great because everyone was playing five at the back for some reason. And (laughs) I think after that, they've really struggled. So I'll go Chelsea first. And me and Marcus actually had the same person for... You had it for Arsenal, didn't you? Yeah, but I changed it off a bit. Marcus had to change because he knows more about football than I do. I'm basic. I just go off who's got a higher threat to FIFA card. <laughs> so I've gone for Husum Auer, if that's how you say it, from uh, Olympic Lyon. L- Is that the one? Yeah. Lyon. That, that, Lyon. That's Lyon. Enough, from yeah. Olympic Lyon. Yeah, yeah, I've said that. I'm never saying his name again now. I'm just going to refer to him as him because <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it. But Husum Auer. I've watched him a little bit and he is he's top draw. I think he is. I think he's, he's young talent. He's coming through. He's just... He, he, I, I think he, who does he remind me of? I don't know. He's a bit. I don't know. He's a bit David Silver esque, and I know that that is nothing like David Silver because David Silver's top player, Premier League legend, right? But you can say you can't compare the two. Yeah. He, he, he gives me. He reminds me a little bit of him. There's shades of David Silver in him. Yeah. I think he'd be. I think he'd be a top shout for Chelsea because they've been. I think Werner will eventually kick on, and I think Havertz and Uwe together. Whatever his name is, I still can't say it. That's, <laughs> that's not going to help. Do you want to repeat that? <laughs> uh, Habits and said player. Uh, when um, I think they'll really, I think when Habits finally, I think he's a bit too. I don't think he's physical enough for the Premier League yet. I, I think he's really struggled. So I think they'll be uh, really good together. He's been very poor. I think he's been one of the flops of the season. Oh, I think has. I think I'd, I'd, I'd say million actually, for him. our could um, replace Habits. I'd say because he's been he has yeah, been that so, well, he could yeah. he could but our Chelsea really I think Chelsea will give him another but season and a half the good thing I'd say about our is you do have the chance to either play him in the 10 role in their 4-2-3-1 as a middle cap yeah. or you could play him slightly deeper with Kante if you wanted he's, he's versatile he re- he's, a, he's an all round midfielder so that's that's Chelsea covered so we're can left... I just say some? can well, I just quickly say something about Chelsea I well, think there is a lot of pressure within this, these two windows for Frank Lampard I think because he's had his big summer blowout 
with all this money that he's spent over the years. But I think if he doesn't if he doesn't bring in some players this these two transfer windows, I think his recruitment will be very questionable because mm -hmm. he's he signed. I think Chilwell's been the only really successful no, and the keeper to be fair. No, Mendy's I think Silva right. was good as well when he's been playing because. Because that whole yeah. that whole defense has worked well as a unit, goalkeeper included. Yes. They've had a, they've yes. only had yeah. a few poor games. The keeper's, but the keeper, I'd say, has been the surprise of the season. He's been up there with the surprises of the season because I, was, so, yeah. I wasn't expecting okay. him to be that good. Because you know, Kepa was a shock, shocking buy. It was <laughs> just awful. Like I think his mm. final straw was I think, was it against Arsenal? Was it where he basically yes. he, he basically gave him the win? And it was yeah. like the two goals, <laughs> two goals gave him the win, and it was like, right, yeah, now, yeah. that's it. You've had your final, that's your final lot. We've spent seventy-five million quid on you, so we're going to give you another shout. And Frank gave him that, and then that was it. That was gone. Yeah, I will take that back. Actually, I think his defense. To be fair, his defensive reinforcements have been good. His attacking yeah. reinforcements have let him down, they especially have. with Havertz and Timo Werner. But, I mean, but if you looked at it, if you looked at it, Werner was the perfect man for Chelsea. You know, he, he would have gone with him. I would say yeah. Werner's look good in the link-up play. It's just I don't yeah. think he's got the yes. end product. Whereas yeah, Habert, he just can't score. Man. Hasn't looked he just good can't at all. score, man. Yeah, but, but to be fair, that does mean Werner can be used out wide more because we know he can play well. He just can't. He struggles to put it in the net. Whereas Havertz is struggling completely on everything. Yeah. Yeah, but, then, yeah, but, that's a good point, but yeah. to be fair, Ben Ben can sympathise with that because he's got a struggling striker who fails to score. In his club, yeah. Bob, <laughs> Bobby. Um, so that's Chelsea. Cutters. Different roles, mate. Different, Dif different roles. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you that. One's a false nine, one's an out-and-out striker, right? No Bobby slander here, please. <laughs> <laughs> lots of Bobby slander, lots of Hendo slander. Every, every kind of slander. And then I've gone for United. Ben said, I'm not going to go for the basic upper main carder. Well, I have. Oh. Well, I have. Oh, and, right. Yeah, but, okay. But we, I, I think in RB Leipzig, they've got... They've got talent in that back line. They've got uh, Mukele, the French defender, haven't they? They've got Canate and they've got Upamecano. But I think Upamecano is the best out of all of them. You know, he's a six, he's six foot three. He's a unit as well. He will he will come in and he'll. I think Harry Maguire. Everyone's saying you know he's he's been all right. He hasn't been that much of a flop. I think he's been shocking. I'm not going to lie to you. For eighty million quid, he, I, would, I would agree. Eighty million quid. He's more than he's more than Virgil Van Dijk. Who's, who's like a generation yeah. defender? You don't see that often. He's a Maldini type, right? Harry Maguire. He doesn't even get. He doesn't even get in the same sentence as someone like. Someone like. Oh, I'm trying to think. It's just. It's just. There's no. I can't. He's just rubbish. He's he's valued currently. Harry Maguire is valued currently at thirty million pounds. That's a fifty million. And Man United. Paid, paid. That's a fifty million drop. I know. I know. That is disgraceful. But, but, but he was never. I think you say his value, but what his value and something you buy like what he was never priced for, at eighty million. What you buy him for is different. He was never an eighty million pound player, but he was. He wasn't. He, the fact that United needed him that bad shows the state United were in. Oh, oh Leicester absolutely rinsed Man United, yeah, and it showed Ed Woodward once again to be a. Yeah, but it's poor. It's, it's poor recruitment. It is. Really is. It's Bruno saving him. Bruno is absolutely. He's just. You, you think of you think of Harry Maguire. You think of a leader in that team. And you, Man United desperately needed a leader when they set when they signed him, and he he's became captain. Fair enough, but he still doesn't provide anything. I think I think Bruno would be a better captain than him. Yeah. Because he's not saying much. He's not providing leadership. He's not comfortable when he gets the ball. He causes panic all around Man United, and that's desperately what they didn't need. Yeah. I do have to say that <laughs> just, if, just the averse. If Man United do sign Uthman Akano, then their back four could be dramatically improved, especially if uh, oh yeah, if Bailly stays fit because we uh, we all did watch the uh, Villa Man United <laughs> game. As we said, we had good running commentary. Brilliant, yeah. And Bailly was good to be Bailly fair. Was very he, good. He's been very good. But, again, massively injury-prone, so yeah, it's hard. Yeah, I would those, agree with that. Bai's one of those players who, if he wasn't so injury-prone, he'd be a starter in that United side for sure. He's absolutely yeah. incredible. Yeah, he, of course, he's, 100%. He's quick. He, again, he's a unit. He's tall. He's everything you want to set about to be. But you can't you can't make an impact when you're sat in the injury room. And that, that's, <laughs> as, that's, as sim, that's as simple as it is. So we've done our top six there. Uh, we were going to do all 20, but we've not got enough time. You know, we, we've got stuff yeah. to do. Maybe we're busy people. Day. No. Maybe we'll we do bottom six next time. 